Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we have something super exciting, and that's this thing, which is the HP Elite Desk 705G4 Mini. Now, you might ask, hey, 705 HP, I haven't ever heard about this before, and that's right, because that is the successor to this one, and this was the first note that we reviewed as part of our Tiny Mini Micro series. Now, Project Tiny Mini Micro, if you don't know, is a series that we're running on STH to take a look at the differences between some of these units that are really these small, about one liter corporate desktop PC that we can repurpose into servers or, you know, web browsing nodes, whatever we want. And so in this video, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about some of the features of the 705G4 Mini, but we're also going to talk about how it compares to both the HPE version and also the Lenovo equivalent that we looked at just recently. So let's get to it. Now on the front of this unit, you're gonna see something that is actually a big differentiator that you might not notice if you haven't looked at a lot of these things. And that's that HP has kind of two headphone jacks and a headphone microphone jack, but it also has a bunch of USB ports. And what I mean by that is it has two USB 3.0 type A ports, and then there's also a type C port. So there's actually three different USB ports on the front of this, including a USB type C. And just for comparison, the 705G3 Mini didn't have that Type-C port. The Lenovo M715Q didn't have a Type-C port either. And some of the Dell units that we've seen, and we've looked at like the 3070, we're gonna have some others, but a lot of those actually have either two USB Type-A or they have a Type-C and a Type-A port, but they don't have three USB ports on the front of them. So it's actually a big differentiator in this generation. Turning to the back of the unit, we actually get four more USB 3 ports. We also get two display ports and we get an HDMI port. Now that HDMI port is in the flex slot, so it could be a number of different options depending on which version you get of this, but just something to keep in mind that we got an HDMI and I love this dual display port plus HDMI port configuration. I think it's just awesome. You're also gonna see a one gigabit network port and that's a Realtek RTL 8111 port. So you can look up compatibility for different OSs. If you're gonna use something like Windows or most Linux distributions, it's gonna work really well. If you're gonna use something like VMware, you're gonna have to go do some driver work to be able to get this thing to work. Now getting inside the case is super easy. There's a simple thumb screw at the back. You pop that open and then you just pull the top off and boom, here you go. This is the inside of the entire unit. Now inside this unit, it's actually laid out very simply because you have the CPU socket on top, which is the AM4 socket, but then you have this nice little fan assembly, which just levers out like this. And you have two SODIMM slots. In our particular unit, we got eight gigs. We upgraded it to 16 gigs with two eight gig DIMMs. So we have 16 gigabytes of memory in this. In terms of CPU, we have the AMD Ryzen Pro 3 2200, which is a four core, four thread CPU with big A graphics. Now, the bottom part of our unit here is actually a little bit different than we've seen in some other units. So first off, we do not have the hard drive carrier for this. The second thing that we don't have, which is actually kind of important, is you can see that there's this little tiny slot right here, which you might not recognize because it's pretty unique to these systems, but this is actually the SATA data connector, and it's actually kind of just this little cable. And if you don't have that, that's a big deal in these systems because you have to source not just the little carrier to hold the two and a half inch drive here, but you also have to source that little SATA cable. And so just something to keep in mind if you are looking to upgrade one that does not come with a two and a half inch bay. Now, although we didn't get the two and a half inch drive. What we did get was we actually got this really nice Samsung. It's a PM, I think 981, 256 gig NVMe SSD, which is a very nice SSD. And so we got that. Some of these units came with the really inexpensive DRAMless SSDs that are much lower performance, but this is actually a pretty nice unit. Something else that you're going to notice that is barren in this system is that there's actually no M.2 Wi-Fi now, a lot of these units came with 802.11 AC, and they also had Bluetooth in here. And this particular unit didn't. And we were super bummed when we found out that didn't because it looked like just based on there's this little tiny Hopefully you can see this here. We thought this meant that there was gonna be Wi-Fi because this is basically the little antenna that HP uses, but it didn't have it. And that was a total bummer. But when we looked inside, there were actually the two Wi-Fi antenna leads. So we can actually just go add an M.2 Wi-Fi card and be all up and running. And just to kind of give you some idea, getting an Intel AX200 M.2 uh, Wi-Fi 6 card is really inexpensive. I mean, I think those things are go for under $20 pretty easily on Amazon or anywhere. So adding Wi-Fi to this is like a $20 upgrade and it's really not that expensive. So talking about performance real quick, I think there are a couple things to keep in mind. First off, this is a huge performance boost over the previous generation G3 system, which used the old AMD Pro A6, A10, I think it might have been like an A12 or something like that solution as well. But this is a huge upgrade in terms of performance. 
This is actually the Ryzen cores. This is a first generation Ryzen product, even though it's a Ryzen 2200. And so that's just something to keep in mind as well. Another thing just to think about is that this system was produced in 2019. In fact, it was actually produced in November 2019. So it turns out we actually got a warranty with this and we checked on the HP warranty checker and yeah, there's an on-site warranty still active for this for another couple months. But when we compare it to the other G4 units that we have, so the Intel-based G4 units, we got the, I think the ProDesk 400 G4 and I think we also have a Elite Desk 800 G4 and both of those have the Intel Core i5 8500 T CPUs. Now, those on the Intel side have a couple of advantages, frankly. The first one is that the 8500 was actually a six core processor. So six core, six threads. This is a four core processor. So that is something nice. And that is really due to a lot of the competition that this Ryzen brought to the market is that Intel actually bumped the core count, which is great to see. But it's something to just keep in mind that when you look at G4, that's going to be a difference. So performance wise, we get something that's kind of between the old AMD 705G3 minis with the old AMD CPUs, but then we also get on the higher end, the Intel, newer Intel architectures, which are just kind of faster. Now AMD makes a big deal about their Vega graphics and how much better the Vega graphics are than the Intel integrated solution. But something to keep in mind is that I know a lot of folks that are gonna watch this are gonna want something like a Plex server. So one update and one note about that. So first off, the Intel solution is usually a lot easier, especially if you're on Linux to go and run it in terms of a Plex server. But the other update that we have is that Nick actually has finished his Project Tiny Mini Micro Plex guide. And so we are going to have a Plex guide for these Tiny Mini Micro solutions on the STH main site. We're probably not going to do a video on that one, but you're going to see on the main site in the next week or so. Power-wise, this thing came with a 65-watt power brick, which is just kind of standard. It's a shared power brick that we see across a lot of units, so super easy to get for HP. The other thing to note about it is just in terms of what our actual power consumption with, it's very similar to what we got on the Lenovo M715Q. So you're kind of seeing somewhere a little over 10 watts for idle, and then you can get up into the high 50-watt range in terms of if you totally load this thing out, put a lot of USB devices, stuff like that, you can actually get it into the high 50-watt range. It's just something to kind of keep in mind. Still, this is a lot lower power consumption than a lot of the full desktop systems, and it's also a lot more compact since it's only about one liter. Now, as part of our Project Tiny Mini Micro series, we always like to do key takeaways because it's important as we look at these systems to be able to take a step back and think about, well, is this really something that's good? Is it bad? Is there something that we learn? So if we go look for these units secondhand, what can we learn about them? And I think that there are basically like two key takeaways. Now, the first key takeaway, which is really simple, is that this particular unit uses the same CPU that we saw in the Lenovo M715Q that we just did. And those two CPUs, we were kind of wondering, well, does Lenovo and HP, is there a big performance delta between the two? And the answer to that was no. Now you might think, well, of course there wouldn't be the same CPU, but the HPE and Lenovo and Dell and all these guys, they actually can set a lot of configurable settings. And so you might expect that one would go and try getting a lot more performance because there are BIOS tweaks that you can do in terms of power and stuff that, that are important. And it turns out we just didn't see a big difference in this. So that was kind of good to know that you can actually go between the systems and we didn't see a big delta. Now we're going to be checking this out also on some of the Intel systems because we got different generations and different systems from different vendors with the same CPUs as well. But on the AMD side, that was good to see. The second key takeaway is really just in terms of making sure that you get the components that you really want in the system. Now, we talked about the Wi-Fi card already as, you know, the antennas are there, which we're really lucky because if they weren't there, then that would be another problem to go kind of go and solve. But having that little M2 card, that's like 20 bucks. The harder one is really getting that whole SATA cable assembly and then the carrier for the two and a half inch drive. So if you do want to add a second drive into this, this would be a lot harder than some of the other solutions that are out there. It's not necessarily a deal breaker and you can find those parts. So it's not like an impossible task, but it's just something that we wish ours had and we just didn't get to see inside of it on the listing. So we didn't know that it didn't have that two and a half inch carrier. And why this is really important is that if you order a system and you expect to go and deploy it and have it out as soon as it arrives or like the day after it arrives, but then it comes and it doesn't have like those little cables or something like that, then you have to go order those and you have to wait for those to arrive. And so that can push back your timeline by a significant amount. And so it's just something that either check in advance or, you know, if you say, hey, this is only a couple bucks, maybe we'll just go get a spare. You can always do that too. Some of this whole thing up, I really like this unit. And there are a couple of reasons for that. The first one is really the USB ports. I really like the fact that there's type C, but there's also a whole bunch of USB ports. And with those five gig USB three ports, we can actually put things like two and a half gig NICs on there. 
If you have a large server that sits in a cabinet or something like that, and you are transporting data using external drives, having a little system like this that you can just go plug a USB drive into and dump data off without having to go plug it into the actual NAS that's sitting somewhere else. I think that's actually a really cool use case for us. I think that at $400, this is probably not the right use case if that's really all you need, but it is just a nice extra feature when you have a lot of USB ports you can go do. The Ryzen CPU, I think performs really well and power consumption on these is really reasonable. So I think that's great. I do wish that I had the Ryzen 5 CPU in this because the Ryzen 5 CPU was actually a pretty significant performance increase. And so it's just something that I feel like I missed out by getting this one. I really like the system, but the other big negative was just price. I mean, this thing was like $400 when I got it with eight gigs and a 256 gig NVMe SSD. Now the Samsung SSD is great. Eight gigs is fine. We were able to add another eight gigs very inexpensively. I think it was like 25 bucks or something like that. So it's not too bad there. But still, you know, if you think about it, we had to add the Wi-Fi. We had to add another eight gig dim. And so to get to our normal kind of 16 gig configuration with Wi-Fi was another 50 bucks, which put this thing at about $445 to $450. And that just frankly seems like a lot because a lot of the six core Core i5 8500T systems that we've been purchasing, those systems actually also come with Windows 10 Pro and they tend to be in the 400-ish dollar range. And so it's about 10% more to go AMD, which is just kind of the bummer. Before closing this video, I just want to point out one other thing, which is that Nick actually has another guide that he just posted recently, which is how to turn one of these units and these tiny mini micro nodes into a PFSense router. So if you wanna go do that, even with a single NIC, he has a guide in terms of how to do that. We're trying to do more guides and more content around how you actually use these things. And so you're gonna start seeing those on the STH main site, but we're probably gonna keep doing videos on the actual units themselves. Hey guys, if you like this video, why don't you click on subscribe, turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with awesome new content because we're coming out with new stuff all the time. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.